Hi, this is Travis Elliott. In this section of our article, we're going to be uh, basically just testing uh, the I2C interface to just kind of get used to it. Um, the Ubuntu 13.04 comes with a really nice uh, tool called I2C Tools, um, which essentially lets you uh, kind of experiment around with the I2C port from the CLI terminal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go through that real quick to kind of get you familiar with the I2C protocol a little bit. We're not going to get in too deep, but basically we're just going to go in here and interface to our I2C device. So at this point, you should have Ubuntu installed on your BeagleBone Black. Uh, I recommend 13.04. If you haven't already uh, watched that article, it's back in chapter one of this article. Uh, which goes over installing Ubuntu. And you should also um, be a little bit familiar with the SSH connection to the BeagleBone Black. Um, you should also have an I2C device connected to your BeagleBone Black. Uh, we kind of covered that back in the, I think, first or second chapter um, on connecting an I2C device. Uh, so your I2C device should be connected and powered up. Um, if you're using an NCD device, um, there will be a power LED and an I2C LED on your I2C device, which should both be on. So, and of course your BeagleBone Black should be connected to the same network your computer is. So at this point, um, without further ado, we'll open up our terminal and we'll start doing some testing. So, I'm using Mac, um, so I'm just using the built-in terminal, but if you're running on Windows, I recommend using PuTTY. So, what we're going to do is we're going to open a new connection to our BeagleBone Black. Username Ubuntu. This is SSH. We'll connect. Uh, the default password is temppwd. Okay, so we're logged in here. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to check permissions on the I2C port. If you're using the NCD I2C CAPE, um, you'll be interfacing to I2C port 1. There are two ports. There's I2C port 0 and port 1. So for this example, I'm going to be interfacing to port 1. If you're using some other device sold by another company, um, you'll have to figure out which port you're interfacing to. So I'm going to go ahead and change directory, directory to the uh, dev directory. <clears throat> and then we'll type in ls-l to check permissions on that I2C port. Expand this, scroll up until we see we've got I2C0 and I2C1. We're using I2C1, which you'll see I have set uh, wide open on the permissions because this isn't a secure application or anything I'm doing here. Of course, if you're developing this to be a secure application, you're going to want to watch uh, your permissions on this. Um, back in chapter two, we discussed how to, uh, in the initial configuration of the BeagleBone, we actually set the permissions of the I2C port on boot up using the rc.local uh, file. Um, if you haven't already done that, I recommend doing so. Like I said, that's covered back in chapter two. So. Now that we know that it's wide open and we have access to it, we're going to um, play with some of the commands. So the first thing we need to do with an I2C device is we need to detect it on the I2C bus, um, which is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to enter sudo I2C detect is the command, and then we need to pass uh, two arguments, which is dash Y and dash R. Uh, you can read up on the I2C tools. Um, they have a wiki page that kind of uh, describes all this. But just know you pretty much need to enter dash Y dash R. And then we need to specify the bank that we want to, or the bus that we want to detect I2C devices on. Like I said, we're using bus 1, not 0. So we'll type 1 at the end and hit enter. It's going to ask us for our password, temp PWD. And now you'll see. Uh, You'll see a bunch of U's down here. Um, ignore that. Um, the BeagleBone um, occupies these uh, these positions, so we don't need to worry about that. But you should see, if you have an I2C device connected and powered up, you should see 
um, a byte listed in here somewhere. My particular device is mounted on uh, 21. So we need to keep note of that. Um, you'll see there's 20 and then 1, so it's 21. If it were over here, it'd be 20. Um, I can also change the, um, the address of this device with onboard jumpers. So I can set it to uh, 20, 21, or 22, I believe. Or 23, I think I can go up to 23. So now that we know this value, we're actually ready to start using that device. Now my particular device is a relay board, which the, relay bo the relays are driven with uh, GPIOs. So the lines can be either inputs or outputs. So the first thing I have to do is I have to set all the channels on this chip to outputs. So what I do for that, and this is just pertains to just a particular device that I have. If you're using a board that's just an input board, this doesn't apply to you. So I have to enter sudo i2c set no spaces. And I have to specify the bus number, which is 1, the address of my I2C device, which is 0x21. And I have to specify the, uh, the address on that device I want to write to, which is 0. And then the value I want to pass to it, which is going to be 0, which sets all my channels to outputs. So I hit that. Say it's going to ask you if you want to continue. It always does. And you click yes and uh, it just took the command. So, and now I'm actually going to turn on all the relays on my board. So to do that, I'm gonna say sudo i2c set again, and then I specify the bus number, which for me is one, which it should be for you as well. The uh, address of my i2c device on that bus, which is 0x21, the address that I want to write to on that particular I2C device, which for this particular device to set the status of the outputs, the address in there you want to write to is 0x0a. And this will apply to any of the relay boards that we offer. And then I'm going to pass a value for the outputs, which is 0xff. Um, FF is essentially um, 255 or all on. So I'll pass that and then we'll get a click after we hit yes here. Okay, all my relays are now on. So at this point I can actually read the status of my relays um, with an i2c get command. So I would enter sudo i2c get the bus number which is 1, the address of my device which is 0x21 and then the address that I want to read out of that device, which is 0x0a. Now since this is a git command and not a set command, I don't have to pass anything else. I'm just telling it I want to get the information off that particular byte, that particular address on the chip. And I'll say, do you want to continue? We'll say yes. And you'll see we get 0xff, which means all the relays are currently on. So now I can pass a command to say, turn all the relays off. I can say sudo i2c set bus 1, 0x21, 0x0a for the address on that chip, 0. And this will turn all the relays off. Of course, we always have to hit this yes in the i2c tools terminal. And that turns all the relays off. Now, I can pass anything. I've just been passing 0 and ff to set the, uh, the status of all the relays on that board. You could actually just pass, uh, we could pass a 1, we could say sudo i2c set bus 1, chip 21, address on that chip is 0x0a, and then we could pass it, say, just a 1, 0x01. And this will actually just turn on just relay 1. So you could pass 1 to turn on relay 1, 2 to turn on relay 2, you could pass 3 to turn on relay 1 and 2, you could pass 8 to turn on relay 3, you could pass 10 to turn on relay 3 and 2, so you kind of get the idea. Basically every relay on that chip has a binary value and you add them up and that's how you set the status of all the relays on that bank. Um, and they're you know clustered in banks of 8. 
So this chip has eight outputs, which could also be used as contact closure inputs. Um, but in this particular application, it's tied to relays, so they're outputs. So this is basically a rundown. This is just kind of an initial test that you can do to test with your particular I2C device to make sure it's functioning. You'll need to look into the data sheet for your particular device to see what the commands are. You know, like here I was using 0x0a, which I know is the address for the outputs on this particular chip. I found that from the data sheet. Um, the 0x21 you can pretty much get with that I2C detect command, which we got this 21 up here. Um, so what you really need to know is the actual uh, command set or protocol for your particular I2C device, which is going to be outlined in the data sheet. So at this point, um, hopefully your I2C device is actually up and working. So at this point, you should have Ubuntu installed. You should have initial configuration and setup of your particular language, whether that be Java, PHP, web development, um, whatever you happen to be doing. And then in the next videos, we'll actually get into controlling um, your I2C devices from um, whatever language you're going to be developing in. So we'll move on to that in the next chapter. Um, and that's about it for this. So if you have any questions, just let us know.